Well, that's just d Hello, this is K.R. Brickbot. And I'm here with a dandy look at dandy. Yeah, this box is looking kind of plain right down here. It looks like this would be a perfect spot to put in some specifications. If a undiscernible car needed specifications. And it's facelift edition. Yeah, so this went from green, white, and yellow to predominantly green with some yellow. And not some lime green, but it still has the hexagonal detailing, but now all over. The top view, it looks like this box is about the same width. With the same layout here, sim sort of. But uh, the old box was slightly taller. Slightly thicker. This is just the same stock photos. But the old packaging highlighted some of the screen caps from the animation series. I think only three car box packaging had these as an advertisement feature. Monkey. The background on the old box is looking kind of plain here, just two-tone colors. The right up here is looking pretty plain. This would have been a good space to put in some extra text if there was such a thing. But it uh, looks like this box has more space for a little bio right up here. And the same rendered stock photos for the safety axe. Yeah, this is like one of the only times they don't have actual toy photos of this. Yeah, so this edition of Dandy was from October of 2019. Yeah, that is a relatively short time span. Yeah, I think, but somehow this particular edition of Dandy didn't sell as well as the other formerly Hyundai reissues. Yeah, in fact, I think some dedicated toy stores still have this particular version in stock and not this. I mean, I think the, the bigger retailers, they restocked with this, but some stores still have this lying around. Which makes it all the more confusing since most of the online listings just restock the same old Starrick standy listings instead of new entries. So if it was not for the price difference, you really could not tell if you were getting this version or the 2020 facelift version. I wonder how many parents that has confused already. Unboxing time. Double sandwiched like this with two separate cardboard connectors. And the axe was right in the middle there. Dandy has a pretty colorful palette with yellow, orange, and a little bit of green hidden in all the white shell of the car mode. So regarding the paint, this one feels pretty smooth, but it looks like the newer version, it's pretty glossier. It kind of looks a little bluer, but it still feels smooth to the touch compared to this. Also major props for tightening those arm joints. The shoulders are pretty unique in that they have a little stopper down here so that the arm just goes all the way here. And there's a little cutout or notch in there. Interesting arm construction, I really haven't seen anything like that. Connected to these big burly yellow arms with the size of the van as the kibble. They make kind of uh, gauntlets over his very big and long fingered fists. Those are very long fingers on a little bit of a wrist swivel. Yeah, another point of potentially lost articulation. And it's also interesting that they also painted in these in the interior of the van. Like some extra details. Not sure what they are, but I do appreciate it. But I also kind of don't like how this kibble doesn't get all the way out of the way. 
it doesn't let him fully reveal his fist. And it doesn't lock in all the way either. Yeah, just slightly all the way back here, but then toggle it and it snaps back. Yes, and these arms are really beefy. You need good beef for a character like this. Not some little noodly arms. And as you saw, he doesn't have bicep swivels as usual, but his transformation allows him to do a little curling flex inside the chest. So I would recommend you push this in first, then push it in, or else if you just do it automatically, you'll just likely chip the paint on his green chest gem thingy. The kibble shoulder doors also add to his bulky profile. They really stretch out like this, but they still leave some relatively enough space for him to do some good arm poses. Unless he's uh, pointing up, in which case it does kind of get in the way. Yeah, the arms go all the way up this much. I guess that is enough to hold something. And these little orange pieces, while they're pretty simple, they do have a little extra detail here, like some wiring and uh, tubes or capacitors. And the head here is also looking pretty unique. Some yellow and orange with a little bit of black. No light piping whatsoever. But this faceplate looks more like a mouth mask. It doesn't really cover the face as much as the other carbots. And this head kind of reminds me of a Korean oxen. And the back is pretty clean. Just the entire car front sitting on the back with some cannons or smokestacks. Which you can flip forward for a good offense mode. He doesn't have any separate guns because this is his main accessory. It's a pretty standard looking axe with some silver paint on the trim that's definitely going to get chipped off. But one side has more silver than the other. And the really cool feature of this is that this thing splits into two. So you have a double axe now. One slightly longer than the other. So there are a couple of play options like so double wield. I guess for twice the chopping. And then plug it into single hand just for the double axe chopping for wood or rubble. So yeah, a melee weapon for a strong heavy bot. And it's one of the few that has weapon storage. Not intentional, but it's there. Little tabs on here can tab right here. So the cable doesn't sit all the way back now, but that is a convenient weapon storage. If a little unsightly, having a little handle on there. For a burly bot, his legs are looking kind of long and lanky. Also, these parts are the most visual identification of the version. Yeah, so this is in three joints, like the upper leg, which is kind of unusual in that there is a stopper that gets in all the way of the leg. Actually, these are tabs for connecting to here in the car mode. So what you have to do is untab this. Untap the torso a bit to let him do a full kick forward. Once you do that, you have a quite a wide range. But it's a little inconvenient that you have to slightly unhitch that to give him some full range, then you have some gappage. Yeah, I wonder why they didn't relocate that tab somewhere else, like maybe on the painted orange shins. If you would rather have tabs sticking out of the shins than on the ball joints, the hips. Yeah, so I'm assuming this is his knee. And this third joint is just for transformation that will get loosened easily, but not that loose. So the inner legs are sh sharing a lot of detail, a lot of mechanical greebling. 
like pistons, hydraulics, like coils, springs, slightly mismatched orange plastic. Yeah, I appreciate these little details here and there that could make it a little more than just a kid's toy. And also some yellow paint on the back of here. And the lower legs, they have these yellow blocky shins. Also a common point of scrapage. And coming down to some orange feet. Some wide orange feet at a permanent A stance. With some orange paint on front here that goes a little forward and a little backward. So you, I think you could get some good poses, but his long lanky legs kind of make it a balancing act. Yeah, I think ankle tilt would have been really helpful, but they didn't think of ankle tilt. It's also kind of expensive to make ankle tilt, I assume. Yeah, so I guess you could do a superhero. Also, Dandy is the tallest of the standard carbot size. As you can see here, like a whole head taller, thanks to his long legs. Not commander class size, but a pretty good size, like a good size difference. To show he's the big and strong one. Transformation. First, the weapon storage. Make sure the tab points down. Then click in the knees and the lower legs and the tab here and then you can unlatch that all the way on his uh, rather conspicuous thing and yeah so it goes a full double hinge 90 and now you have a mid transformational mode or fast transport mode or cyberverse scout class mode don't blow me up as I said before, it's best to push this in first, then close it in, or else just doing this first will just will chip that green. Click those upper pieces and then leave those doors out. Yeah, bring those down, click them in. Bring those down, solid clicks, click the front end and the sides. Opening door function to reveal a whole bunch of junk. Now to delve into the double dandies. That's reflecting all the white out of the bright blue background. So the redesigned grill looks like it takes a lot more surface space. And also the grill that goes all the way down here instead of this little thing. Double vent. Double lines. At a very subtle V. It's not exactly the 2018 Starx nor like the Starx Royale but it's somewhere in between. The headlights look the same, but on closer inspection, these lower bits on the headlights, they're slightly bigger and they also jut out more. Yeah, they if you can take a look here, if you can observe this, it really juts out. While it's pretty flush like a car headlight should, that is very unusual. And as you see, there's an extra raised ridge on the roof and the lower bumper is looking more angled and triangular and squared and no discernible license plate and a jutting out bumper that will be very likely to get chipped and nicked on the bumpers those little nicks when it just slams into concrete walls I'm pretty sure the bumper is like the same height, but somehow this just has the illusion that this thing is lower to the ground. And looking at the wheels, this wheel modeled after the 17 inch alloy wheel has been slightly modified 
to have more pentagonal hollow bits and thicker outer extrusions, thicker spokes, s spoke lines. So it's not exactly diamond cut, but it's like infringing free cut. This portion right here looks about the same with those side turn signals and not actually included side splotches. And the handles are also slightly remolded. Looks like they extrude out more and they have more angles cornered here, angled corners here. And the front handle has a little extension. The black trim on the bottom doors here, it looks like it's overall shorter because it's really short here and then it raises slightly upward to create some sort of angle. And instead of the petrol cap right here, uh, it, it doesn't have it. Or it's this weird, subtle, three-sided trapezoid thing. Exactly the same on the other side. What's up with that, I wonder? And if you see here, there's also a cutout space right here. That's just all smooth on the Star X. And that also goes for the rear bumper back here. It's There are more ridges, raised ridges that have been added. The gentle bulge curve on the original doors, they're much more sharp and angular now. You can exactly see where it stops, where this one is pretty subtle. Those subtly curved real cars. Not this one. And following that, the shape of that trapezoid thing, the curved flow here is also very different. Convexing out instead of concaving in. It's not a grand Star X, but it does have grand rear bumper bumps. Extra bumps. Also, I think you can tell that these headlights are actually thicker. These taillights are a little thicker. Yeah. Some of the glue on this thing tends to wear out, I guess. Directly matching up the headlights show this thing on the bottom bit jets out more. So now, when you're looking at it from this angle, there's an extra tail light just sticking out like that. It's pretty simple enough that you could uh, imagine this is Dandy's pre-Earth alien Cybertronian mode. Or a alternate universe Dandy. Or future Dandy. Yeah, but I'm totally calling this his prequel mode. Also, for a car, the underside is very clean. Only the legs are the most visible part and a little bit of the head, but the underside is pretty flat. With some more detailing and such, with or without the axe, I think it was a missed opportunity to have a couple of Hyundai Star X Dandies as limited edition business cards. I mean, yeah, you know, a lot of small local businesses have Star X's because they're vans. So imagine if there were a couple of unique one of a kind Star X's with the company's own phone numbers and such. But they might also need a variant that's a solid windowless van. I mean, yeah, that would be like $50 business cards, but that would be a neat concept unless someone decided to make a custom of their own, which I haven't really seen online. Yeah, I guess this would have been more feasible as little business cards. Just a thought. And a van is a good ambulance and so is Dandy Ambulance. And naturally there is a facelift Dandy Ambulance. The exact same overly complicated, ridiculously big and wide box size and all. Yeah, this is ridiculously wide that I haven't found a good storage box for this yet. So this is his default ambulance mode now. It looks like they really don't want to give the original green version a chance anymore. Unless he's part of a foot. Or in China. So it has that similar 
detailing design, like the striped yellow bits that goes downwards to a trapezoid as the full box image implies. Also that grid work there, dandy new ambulance. The exact same stock photo, but now it's front and center with the new ambulance mode. Top of the box, this thing looks slightly less thicker. The back of the box, also the exact same stock photo with the gun and safety axe in CG renders and not real photos. Let's just see how this one is boxed. Medic down. So this time, all the ambulance bits are together, clumped all the way to the bottom, edge bottom, and the axe and medical gun are there. And opening the side. Oops, this is also taped in. So, he is packed with the shoulder doors unnecessarily opened, hence the really wide box. Whether it was a green Korean Star X, a green Korean ambulance, a yellow emergency response Star X, or a yellow emergency response ambulance, or a slightly different yellow emergency response ambulance, it's all pretty much the same except color palette swap or mold swap and new colors and a whole bunch of other accessories like these side roof lights, the chest that goes light and sound, the axe to red, and an extra little syringe medical gun. I guess if you don't like that bulky look, uh, you can fan mode it as his extra bulky gauntlets. Also, the cannons are gold, which is, looks a pretty little prettier. There are less paint apps on the feet and torso, but that's just a minor quibble. I think that, along with the slight price hike, contributed to the extra accessories. At least the back of these shins have differing colors. And you can do the automatic chest curling without any worry of paint chipping. Although that's very crackly. Which is kind of neutered with the front of the ambulance, which becomes a little chest armor. It does change the appearance, but it blocks the articulation. Even though it's not a real ambulance, this facelift ambulance still looks like a Korean ambulance. Just slightly technoized, technoized with these all these extra line details and additions and such. I don't know, if you remove the symbols and the uh, ambulance and kukupte, I guess this could also pass off as a Cybertronian ambulance. But the paint is much different here. If you can see, yeah, this one is just so much more shiny and glossier. This one is just pretty matte and non-reflective. And also much brighter yellow than the pretty orangish yellow of this. And I guess this is a little more durable in the toy box than this paint. Just rough handle either of these and they will scratch, but I think this one will have a little less white showing out of the toy box than this. I, I assume this will be scuffier. I've kept it in good condition, but for those, for the intended audience, I imagine this thing will be really banged up. I can't believe I bought the entire Hello Carbot Season 1 and 2 cast again just because they changed the skin. I really thought they would just stop at this. They would just continually reissue the 
not Hyundai ones, but they really went a step further and I just fell for it. And now I have a whole bunch of variants, subtle variants, mind you, not like complete repaints or repaints of the new characters, just outer skin variants. But I suppose that was possible living in Korea and having too much disposable income. So regarding Dandy, he's a van that transforms in a very unique way. That design holds up pretty well. Maybe except for those legs. So if you fancy getting a Dandy, uh, you can find these in some Korean shopping sites. But if you really want to stick to the Grand Starix, there still might be plenty of these at a slightly higher price point, but also on the Chinese market and in Sir Toys, minus the Korean. Or you could pay 150 or so for the actual Starix version. Or if you care for none of these and would like a traditional combiner dandy. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe. So until next time, this is KR Brickbot signing off. <clears throat>